Hello everyone and welcome back. We got a longer one for you today. Looking at these x-rays here, you can see kind of a short fill. Looks like it was uh, you know, found an MB2 there. Um, nothing really on the bite wing to say anything of the occlusion. So this patient was in pain. I did want to show you on the CT scan, there is an MB2 that you can see there. It does join and you can see that apical finding. As the patient was having pain, we elected to go ahead and redo this one. I'll You'll see later on in the video, but I do believe it is because it was filled short. There was a technique popular on the East Coast back in the day of using dentinal shavings as your final apical seal in the bottom two millimeters, give or take. The idea being that it would be a better seal if you use the patient's own dentin to seal it rather than get a percha. Unfortunately, that doesn't work. <laughs> so you'll see we have a little bit of work to do to get past those, and I'll show you how we do that in a little bit. But go ahead and drill it through that beautiful Emax crown, um, lithium disilicate. The purple burr really does work well for this. Um, I did keep everything in. You will see a couple cuts here and there, and that's just to, um, it makes it a lot easier for it to for Da Vinci to figure out how to stabilize the footage. And if you've ever seen these footages, if you look at my early videos, I didn't realize how bad they were, <laughs> but you, you really do want to have these things be stabilized. One of the things that I've started to do is when I'm doing this access, I try to keep everything as small as possible, but for retreats in particular, they're going to be big. Uh, I, I usually don't have to retreat really, really small accesses, and you can see from the bite wing how big the access was to begin with. I ended up using the larger prep burr in that case uh, to get the bulk of the... Um, the bulk of the composite away. And then once we're down about three, four, maybe five millimeters, I'm gonna switch over to the workhorse. I said it right that time. I'm, I'm doing well. This these these the speech classes have paid off. I'm working on working on my English. <laughs> anyway, the workhorse then I use without any water because composite makes such a different color dust than Denton does. So this allows me to be very conservative in how much I remove because I only want to remove the existing composite. I don't really want to remove any tooth structure at all unless I have to go after like MB2 or something like that. You'll see I'm hitting the, the gutta percha a little bit. That's totally fine as well. It, there's no problems with that. Um, rinsing that all out. I, I even kept the rinsing in for, for the, the weirdos out there like me who like to watch every little aspect of it. <laughs> this is this is the, how long it actually takes. Um, this is us switching around. This is switching burrs, um, hand pieces, everything like that. The only thing that I did cut out was the x-ray because all you would see is nothing. Um, <laughs> So uh, the, when I take the check film before I do the build up, that's when um, that's the only thing I actually did cut out. So add in like a minute or so for the for the x-ray and you'll have an idea that it's about 28 minutes or 29 minutes. You know, so about half hour for everything, which is pretty good. So when we're removing the composite here, you can see I am I like to remove the bulk of the gutta percha oftentimes another thing that was kind of hip to do for some reason was to fill the chamber a little bit with gutta percha and i've just found that it makes retreats really messy so if you're already going to be in there hit it with the burr and it'll come out the one time you don't want to do this is if it is a thermophil case because you want to keep those carriers up as high as possible it makes it far easier to grab and remove if you do come off it's not the end of the world usually you can get thermophils out pretty quickly but just a pro tip there as well of if you're dealing with this you know, remove, remove that gutta purchase so you have to do less work with the actual um, alpha. So speaking of the alpha, we're coming in now to start removing the gutta percha here. And this is just my way of getting that coronal aspect out. It makes it so that my rotary files don't have to do nearly as much work. And that's the, that's the key here is you really do want to make sure that we're keeping things make your life easy. <laughs> Don't go straight in with a burr here if you can have a heated instrument like this to remove the bulk of it. Um, you know, Remove it with a high speed rather than using this. There, there's just small little tips that I have that uh, over time make life a lot better. So cleaning this out here with gutta percha, um, this is one of my first tests that I do to see am I going to need to use solvent, chloroform, anything like that to soften it. If the heated tip at 230 Celsius melts it really efficiently, generally it's not a problem to have to go in there. Uh, if it doesn't, that's when I'm going to need something to soften it. And you can see that F1 spinning at you know 500 or 550 is the fastest my little heads go. Um, it makes a makes it quick work of that soft gutta percha. Now you will see here I do struggle a little bit with the MB2. And if you saw in the cone beam, actually I don't know if I showed that slice, it takes almost a right angle into the MB1. 
So what I'm doing here is just trying to remove as much of it as possible. I don't think I'm actually going to get Peyton in here, but as it's very clear that it does join, we're going to run the gentle wave. It's going to clean out everything for me, and then I'm not as concerned about it. I'm not, I don't want to really break anything or you know trough away that huge amount of tooth structure because that's just going to predispose the tooth to a fracture. Now, one thing you will notice here um, is I'm not taking these all the way to length. And that's because I can't. <laughs> I'm hitting the dentin, the little plug that I was talking about. So what I'm trying to do here is remove as much of the gutta percha as possible, but I'm also trying to see how close am I to my working length on the cone beam. I am going to be using the gentle wave here. The instructions for use do say to keep your um, keep your prep short when you're doing it for the first time. However, sometimes that's not possible. What I just did there is actually used EDTA, and the reason why. It's because it's perfect to help dissolve that detonal plug. Uh, that was what I was leading leading up to at the. I'm doing great this morning. It's it's 9:30. My first patient just wanted to consult, so I still need to have some more coffee. <laughs> anyway, the. When you have those dentinal plugs, they're very difficult to get past with hand files or rotaries if you're dry, but use a little bit of EDTA in there and it will actually soften those plugs really quickly. And that's why you see me kind of recapitulating a lot with these rotary files is because I want to take that solution down to the apex. It will help dissolve those dentinal shavings that have that plug. And then you get patent very quickly and easy. And you'll see we have really nice sealer puffs in the final picture, the final x-ray when we're done with this video here. Um, but it doesn't take too, too long to actually get through this. I would recommend using a slightly stiffer file, so something like a 14 or a 17. If you have to punch through dentinal shavings, it's really tough. Um, but if you have a, in this case, I use the 2006 uh, from SS White, or actually it's the, um, sorry, it's the SS White's original shape, but it's Brassler for their uh, V-Taper series. Um, it's a little stiffer, makes it a little more predictable to get past that area. So we are almost patent, had a little bit more work to do here just to make sure we got all that gutta percha out. Um, final size on your buckles was a 2006 at the apex. The large palatal here, I just took to an F1 because it's kind of the natural shape of it anyway. And what I'm doing here is just a lot of brushing along the side to remove more gutta percha. When you have these larger oh. shapes and you're retreating them, you'll find that you'll often have gut approach kind of stuck against the walls. So after you've got patency, it's a good idea just to go back in. You can see me doing like a brushing stroke side to side to try to remove just as much as possible. You'll see I'm, I'm hitting a wall in the MB2. I am getting some gutta perch out still, so I am going to remove as much of that as possible. And we will use the gentle wave on this case as well. When you are doing the gentle wave, you know, if you're going to be running the cycle, you do want to be careful to make sure you don't have any extra gutta percha in there because it can clog it. Um, the new clean flow is a lot better than they were in the past, so I'm not as worried about it. The The size of the suction tip is large enough that I don't really worry about that. If you ever use the molar PI though, that one has a much smaller hole and I have had those get clogged with gutta percha um, a few years ago when I was working at a different office that had it. So just a thing, it, make sure you remove as much of the gutta percha as possible. It's impossible to remove all of it as we've talked about here. And you can see I'm trying to work that MB2, not really having too, too much success. Um, you can still see there's gutta percha on the walls and what I'm going to do here is in just a little bit I'll use some head to try to remove as much as possible. We're still rinsing with EDTA just because I had it. Uh, not really concerned about using bleach or anything like that here because we're about to run a ton of it through there with the uh, gentle wave. So really I'm just trying to get the as much of the junk out of there as possible, make the gentle wave's life a little bit easier so it can focus on where it needs to, which is in the apex. So head strums, really useful just to get that stuff off the side. I find that they're... Uh, you know, the, the, that pulling motion really does work well. And for me, I love having these file forceps for this right here because it's very easy for me to do the pulling motion, but also to see what I'm doing. If, if I see right there, I was able to see, okay, we're done. If I was using my hands, there's no way I'd be able to see inside this access. So if you haven't picked up one of these file forceps, I highly, highly recommend it. There's a couple different ones you can use. Um, this is the, I think this is Hugh Freedy. I think, or G Hartzell, it's one of the two. I've, I've, I've linked it before. I know that's like my most requested thing, <laughs> but uh, we get them from Shine um, and, and they last absolutely forever. I've, I have never had one of these break, knock on wood. Um, they're, they're absolutely fantastic. So you can see how much easier it is 
with you having that direct line of sight and with not having to use your hands. So once again, plug for that. I, I don't get, uh, I'm not sponsored by them. I, I'd, I'd love to be actually, that'd be a fun one to be sponsored by. I'd love it have them make different things for me. It'd be really cool. <laughs> anyway, we're going to talk about platform building real fast. So what we're going to be doing here, like I said, is the gentle wave, allowing you to more predictably one step retreats, in my opinion, it at least makes me feel better. First thing you want to do is make sure it's as dry as possible. So that's what that isopropyl alcohol was for. It evaporates really quickly and it makes it so that the sound seal almost sticks to the you know, in this case, the lithium disilicate, but tooth structure, it, it just makes a big difference here. The next thing I like to do is go around the rubber dam and seal it with the sound seal. The reason why I'm not concerned really about leakage from the unit itself, but there's always gonna be a little bit of spray. And I've had it before where patients, if I don't do this, or if I have to use like multiple teeth, that spray is bleach and EDTA. And even though it's a lower concentration than we would normally use, it still tastes terrible. So you do want to try to make sure patients have a great experience and seal that off. And then I've also found that, especially with the clean flow, it's nice if you can almost create a flat surface there. You saw me put a little bit on the occlusal surface and then we have a test fit. So in this case, uh, Rubber dam clamps, actually, where are those? I ordered those like a week ago. I ordered these new clamps uh, from a company called Party Time Endo. Great name. I mean, just love it. And they have the, the wings a little farther back. So it makes it a lot easier to use the gentle wave with them. Because this is the other really important thing. If you don't have clear access and straight line with that, you're gonna have a really, really, really bad time. You're gonna have a bad time. <laughs> I did take my daughter skiing yesterday, so that clip's appropriate. And what you can see here is I'm using the back of my mirror while opening the jaws of the clamp to push it back all the way. And now we have nice straight draw, no issues here. All this is real time, none of this is cut. So you can kind of get an idea how fast we are able to pass things back and forth. And the whole time what I'm doing here is talking to my assistant. What I'm doing right now where there's not really anything going on is I am layering on the sound seal onto the uh, I think they're called formers. Are they called platform formers? I'm really great. I'm a, I'm a great uh, Sonendo employee, obviously. <laughs> Not actually an employee. I, I just speak for them every now and then. I think they're called the uh, formers. But um, what I did do here is re-put some of the sound seal onto the area around the rubber dam because I did move it. So you can see there's a couple little gaps there. Just you want to seal these up. It, it Sound seal, it's not cheap, but it's not that expensive. And what I have found is that every time I get a failure in you know the, the running the gentle wave, it's because I haven't used enough material. So use more material than you think. There was some concern initially that with the clean flow, because the sound bar is up in the head, then distance is the enemy of sound, is what was always said. Really, the two to three millimeters they don't matter at all. I think the last time my buddy Logan talked to one of their scientific guys, um, they said it'll work on 35 millimeter long canines, no problem. So this little 21 is not a big deal. Another pro tip here that I have found, and that's probably just because I have giant hands, use the Endo Explorer to break this seal and gently tease this up. If you go straight in and grab it with your hands, oftentimes you will pull out the entire platform, which isn't good. The other tip here is make sure you re-cure before you start to run it. There is an oxygen inhibited layer and that can cause some issues here. So I did speed this up. Um, there's not really much you can see here. And that's because I've actually found when you get good at platform building, you should be able to hold this unit this unit with one finger I, I actually have done it where there's so much suction if you drape the I'll, I'll actually show a picture right here if you drape it properly it will actually suction and hold on to the tooth itself which is really really cool you still want to be in there obviously in case a patient moves or anything like that but you'll notice i started off holding it with my left hand and that's how because i was actually able to do my entire note with my right hand while this was running uh, we haven't had the time to really train the assistants to do this yet and i still want to make sure I feel confident in my ability to do it. However, the ability, like the, 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 I cannot say enough good things about this new clean flow handpiece. It is so much better than any of the other ones they've come out with. So I, I'm, uh, unfortunately I've drank the Kool-Aid on this. I was originally like, I can't believe they're getting rid of all the other 
you know, the molar handpiece and that sort of thing. And that's not official yet, but it will be eventually. This one is fantastic. It works great. It does a great job cleaning all this out and just really does a nice job. So oh, this is sped up like eight times. So I guess this is the only other thing. So I guess it did take a little bit longer than 30 minutes. So we'll, we'll say 35, <laughs> about eight minutes or so for that uh, to run. But we are all done here. I'm going to use the actually the file forceps there to remove that and you'll see not a lot of bleeding that's the, one of the beautiful things with this clean flow is you don't tend to get a lot of bleeding with it the molar one that especially on a retreat like this because you do have to you know remove all the gutta percha and get down to the apex you definitely got more bleeding on that one not sure if you saw that there but when i suctioned out of the mb2 it actually sucks out the MB1. So the gentle wave was able to create a path in there that my files couldn't, and that's why I'm not going back down. So that's about as much bleeding as I get. And with these paper points, I'm really not concerned. Um, that That's a totally normal amount, very easy to get these cleaned out. And that's one of the cool things about the gentle wave is it makes me feel comfortable that I'm able to one step these cases very predictably. Um, still a little bleeding there, but as you can see on that final paper point, we look good. Um, take a quick picture here. This is where I, I always take four pictures on every patient. Um, so initial, uh, this is my MB2 photo that you have always seen me. Uh, hopefully if you've watched my other videos, you've seen those. And then I'll take one with the go to percha and then one at the very end when I've done the restorative. So we are now going to use the score technique. So all this is real time. Once again, no cuts have been made here. You'll notice there are things in my hands all the time. And that's because my assistants are incredible. If you haven't watched the how to train your assistant videos, which uh, based on the view count, not many people have. <laughs> it's not quite as sexy as, uh, you know, root canals. And I can't believe I just called root canals sexy, but here we are. However, that's how you get to be efficient, is you have to have assistants who are well-trained and know what's going on. What I am doing is mostly chit-chatting about what we ever we did that weekend or what the plans are, but I am also constantly calling out what I need next if it's changed from the normal course of things. If it's a, you know, especially for surgeries, things like that, where it's not always the same, I will call out what I need. Um, you saw that I did pull out some of the gutta percha there. This happens. Um, if it does, just go back in with the beta and fill it back in. Um, I find it happens more on larger size canals. So if you haven't used the squirt technique before and are thinking about changing it up and trying it, I would use it on a very conservative shape first. Uh, F1 is about as big as I would ever recommend for a first timer who hasn't tried it before. However, you can try it if you want, <laughs> but I find that they often pull out just because it's a lot to fill in there. The smaller the shape, the more hydraulic pressure you're able to create and the more predictable it is to do the actual technique there. So with that MB2, not really concerned about the, you know, yes, I didn't get a file all the way down it, but no, in this case, it wasn't really a concern for me. You saw when I did this microsuction that the liquid came out of the MB1 meaning that there is a connection between the two of them. And even though my file can't get it, the gutta percha is going to flow. Clearly the bleach and EDTA from the gentle wave were able to flow in there. And once again, notice how the palatal has that little bit coming out there. That's very common on these larger sizes. So that's kind of what I was saying. Usually, usually the apical part still stays in there. Sometimes you'll pull out the entire thing and you're like, oh, cool, I just got an impression of the canal and what it's shaped like. Um, but I find this more on these larger sizes. Like it, it, this was, I would bet this was initially like a F2, F3, probably taken to a 35. Uh, given how everything was in this tooth, I think this was a pretty standard East Coast, you know, circa 2000s style of practicing. And not that there's anything wrong with it. It just, the, the dental shaving thing doesn't work. <laughs> so hopefully that was helpful as far as those tips. If you ever run into it and you find that you're doing a retreat and you are blocked out and you look at the x-ray, they're all about a couple millimeters short. Throw some EDT in there. You might find that it works a lot faster than you think. And what I would have done if the if I wasn't getting any progress with the rotary files is I would have switched to something like a C plus file that is very stiff and very sharp because then you can poke through those dental shavings really quickly. And that was it for the um, obturation. So it doesn't take too long, even though I had a couple of failures there. That was one where I would be letting the assistant know. The assistant isn't in the scope during that time. Usually they're off to the side, um, passing things back and forth, sometimes working on notes, depending what it is. But they, 
usually will have an idea in their head of how many times uh, I teach them all to count. That is some uh, hydrofluoric acid, by the way, we are going to be doing the restorative here. And I found it takes about a minute. I am very bad about not wanting to sit there for a minute. So I found it takes me about a minute to take this x-ray. So it works really well of you put it on there, the rubber dam's gonna keep it out of their mouth, no big deal. Take the x-ray and by the time they get the x-ray, we're good. So the x-ray did look good. Um, See that nice curve on there? I did have a couple little voids in the distal buckle I wanted to address. So that's, you see me going in there. And then the MB looked a little bit funky. So I'm gonna take the PacMac down that one as well, just to make sure we have everything good. The apical area looked great. Um, and that's what I usually find with these larger retreats is the apex is great because you can create that pressure very easily and get a nice dense fill. With the coronal aspect, sometimes you're gonna get a few more voids in there and that's where the pack mac works great to just go in very safe to use it there too if you've never used the pack mac you don't really want to take it more than i'd say a third of the way into the canal and certainly never past a curve because they break like nobody's business they break so quickly <laughs> um, i break one of these a day uh, they're very easy to get out thankfully but they they do break so you have to be careful with those um as i alluded to we are going to be doing the restorative one of my questions that i always thought had was okay we're you know this stuff kind of shows biofilm is the gentle wave able to remove all the bio no idea what happened to the audio there. Sorry about that. The question that I was asking a few days ago when I originally recorded this, I think Windows had to do an update and that's why it, it something, I'm not sure what happened. Anyway, the file died. <laughs> the question was, because the general is able to remove so much of the biofilm, would it still be there? And you can see there's still some staining and darkness inside the tooth. And so I think the answer is, yes, it does a better job than just traditional bleach EDTA of removing the biofilm. However, in those cases, you may notice when I've done the disclosing before, it tends to stick more towards the obturation material. So it'll be on the gutta percha, especially if there's sealer inside there. So my theory here, and I haven't tested it by, you know, putting it in after, but I guess I could potentially, maybe I'll do that as a test. My theory is that it's more sticking to the obturation materials than to the actual tooth itself. What you will notice for sure is the hydrofluoric acid removes all of it. <laughs> that stuff is wicked. That's uh, if you remember uh, Breaking Bad, that's what they used to dissolve bodies. Doesn't actually work. Thank you, Mythbusters, for teaching us that one. But here we are, all nice and cleaned up. Gotta love how pretty those look with the, after you etch it and all that, just be real pretty. So going to do the restorative here. Loving this single bond, the single uh it's just it's awesome 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 stuff um the single bottle is what we all prefer at this point here <laughs> um air thin it just like normal and then dry there is still a little bit of the two-step material in one of the rooms and i can't remember if we're in it we'll know in a second here nope this was a single bond one so there we go um even when i have to redo them they're still on a single take <laughs> and with that stuff, it really does work nicely. It has the silane in it, so I don't have to add that step anymore. And silane is really, really expensive. It's not like this stuff is cheap, unfortunately, but it, it really does work nicely here. Probably should have sped up this light here, but yeah, I did a full 20 seconds on that because you do wait. And during this time, the assistant is mixing the, in this case, Luxacore. So it, the 20 seconds is fine because that's about how long it takes for them to mix this up. Luxacore in the brown Centrix tube to the top. And I've really come to like this stuff for sealing up Emacs crowns because it tends to match nicely. It's a chameleon. Um, usually it's within a shade or two of where the actual occlusal surface is. This one, I probably should have done a layer of like A2 on top, a, almost A1, because it was a little bit brighter when it's all said and done. But it's close enough that unless you're looking through it on a microscope like I do for everything, no one, he, the you know, guy's not going to open his mouth and people are going to be like, oh, you had a root canal on that tooth. It, it, it blends well enough that you can't really see. Make sure you still like cure these because it allows you to then do the bite adjustment, everything super fast, and we'll kind of go do that right now. So at this point, looking pretty there, um, I usually take a picture right around here, just if it looks nice. That way I don't have to worry about taking it after I've done the bite adjustment and having the patient's cheek and everything else involved. It's just easier to do without before you do the final bite adjustment here. So um, barrel burr, great burr for this. If you Once again, this is one of my other favorite, favorite, favorite things. If you haven't used this burr before, it's absolutely amazing. I was actually in on the previous weekend seeing an emergency patient. I was talking to my um, good buddy from dental school. He was the dentist of the patient who was having the ER as a scooter accident because, of course, it was a scooter accident. Oh, part two of the trauma should be coming out at the end of this month, by the way. I just was going through my calendar and I have that 
uh, scheduled up to talk to the SLU residents. But we were all talking about how much we like this burr and how we wish we had it in dental school. So if you're a dental student, try to get a hold of these because it makes your crown preps like a billion times easier. And I think it would have made a huge difference for us. <laughs> um, Always finish up here with the flat disc just to get any sharp spots off there. And you'll notice it is slightly darker. The The A3 does show a little bit more that I'd like in this case. So this is one where I probably should have done a slightly brighter one. But with this, I, I don't think anyone's going to look at that and be like, oh, you know, the lay person's not going to know that a dentist, was, that a root canal was done on this tooth. So one of the things I like to do with my bite adjust is just smooth off anything. And I'm doing really light brush strokes here, mostly to see if there's any composite or bonding aging, because sometimes it'll go up onto those cusps. And if you've ever drilled these, it looks very different when you're drilling composite than it does Emacs. And so that's what I'm checking there. But pretty good results as far as everything. We're going to do our final bite adjust here. And there's that final picture. So you can see a little bit darker. Probably should have gone up a shade. Um, but that, that crown's pretty darn white, too. <laughs> that's part of the problem. <laughs> um, I'm not an aesthetic dentist. I, I try to do aesthetics every now and then. But I have like two shades of composite because that's usually all we need to do. And yeah, so we're going to do our final bite adjustment here. I just wanted to show this. I know some people have asked about the whole bowl philosophy. And you'll see it actually looks good on three. But notice on 19, there's these giant cusps on the bottom. And that's where the bowl comes in. You want to adjust the opposing because if you don't, it can cause issues long term and it'll probably help prevent any cracking or issues with uh, 30 as well. So I always talk to the patients of, you know, we're just going to uh, use a David Clark line of we want to get harmony to your bite. That makes me my music major side really likes hearing that. And patients tend to not bulk at having the opposing teeth adjusted. I, I know that's always a question. And no, it does not cause sensitivity that that is from a misunderstood endo literature showing that even a slight occlusal adjustment causes an inflammatory response inside the pulp, but it is not necessarily a negative inflammatory response. I know we've talked about this on the channel before. There's different types of inflammation. So even though it does technically cause a response to the pulp, I think it's far, far, far worth it. The, the risk of any issues is incredibly low and the benefits are huge. So always adjust the opposing and as well as the initial tooth. And you'll see I'm even doing the buckle here just because the I like the points to be a little bit sharper and not quite as broad, especially on a tooth that has that big old amalgam. The risk of fracture here is pretty high for this guy and may as well adjust two on there and make sure everything looks happy. <laughs> the other day I ended up doing all the posterior teeth as adjustments because of course I did. Anyway, that's kind of what we're looking like. I'm happy with that, I think. Are we done? I'm looking at the video as I'm like, we're almost done here. So I'm pretty sure this is the case. Let me know what you guys think of this format. I almost find it difficult to talk and kind of come up with things to talk for about for this long. But that is how the case works. Here's what we're looking like as far as the final post-op. You can see where we were able to get those nice sealer puffs and look at it before how we were about two millimeters short, give or take. Notice on the distal, we actually got around it, got that nice curve in there. So really pleased with the final outcome on this. Patient's doing great. And there we are as far as the pictures. So thank you all for watching. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to drop a comment below and I'll talk to you all next time.